Hey guys, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Total War Attila here today on the channel. We're back with episode 7 of my Age of Justinian Byzantine slash Roman Empire campaign. In today's episode, we're going to declare war upon the Swaby tribe that have occupied the western half of Iberia. We've still got this horde sort of camping out on the River Nile in my territory in Egypt. We have to keep a watchful eye, but I guess they're just having some fun in their new holiday home. Also, we've managed to get Tier 2 units. We've built uh, two of the three buildings that we can. So now we can remodernize, reforge, and just get a better quality Roman army, which is fantastic. So we have some new units here in Constantinople, but mostly the Bucalari are going to be recruited from there. But here are our heavy spear infantry. We've also got some... Um, heavy swordsman as well. So we'll get this going. We've got the finances to do so. So now let's turn our attention and investment into the Roman war machine in new equipment, new armor, and better quality trained units. How fantastic does that sound? And then we can maybe look to go to war with a major faction, maybe the Sassanids, maybe Aquitaine or Burgundy. Or the Lombards. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> so we'll get four spearmen, the rest swordsmen. Uh, we do need to keep a watchful eye on Italy, as there have been rebellions there, particularly in Regium and whatnot. So we're currently under the reign of our second emperor, Emperor Justin. He's heir Tiberius. And we've got uh, Comment Ulius, who is Belisarius's adopted son. And we also can get eventually as well, uh, tier 2 units in Iberia. So we've got two military recruitment zones, one in sort of Barcelona, the second one in um, Constantinople. However, we've had a son. It's taken seven episodes for us to have a male heir in this line. So Justin has had a son. So this could cause a, a succession crisis as Tiberius is adopted. So we'll just have to see how that plays out. Okay, still slowly but surely getting those military forces built in Constantinople. We'll get them in our army build soon. Uh, we'll bring them over to Tiberius and potentially Justin as well. Archers, Bucalari in Constantinople and in Nicomedia we've got um, Swordsman coming. So, I was making plans to go to war with the Swaby, however, they've managed to actually take some territory here and they've actually gained more territory in Iberia. Uh, these guys here that were my puppets have been um, taken out and we've got those Roman Hispania rebels there. So, basically, modern day Portugal has fallen to Visigothic and Swaby forces. So, they've got an army just here in the south, we've got an army in the north, we have three full stacks ready to declare war. Upon the Swaby, we've also got the Roman fleet to help us out as well. And we've nearly brought Iberia under control. Oh, they have a military alliance with Hispania. Interesting. But it's taken a while. This has been a really big battle royale down in Spain. Okay, so we'll siege that. We'll bring in some additional reinforcements. Oh, okay. So we'll send the navy to deal with a... Swaby force on the field. Alright, we'll play this one here today. Our first against the Swaby. We'll command this one with the Emperor Justin. A lot of Bucalari. A lot of better quality spear and swordsmen. From what I'm used to. So we've got the Battle of Paca in modern day Portugal in 565 AD against one of the terrifying, feared, S the savage Swaby tribe, I guess. They've migrated south from Germany and have found themselves a pretty decent home in Iberia. But this is our old, ancient Roman lands that we need to bring back under Justinian control. I'll put in the description below as well the mod if you guys would like to download it and play along with me. And also in the first episode, I did put up on screen the mod pack that I'm using, but... It's all down to personal preference. On the Just Age of Justinian mod page, there is a bunch of sub mods as well. So if you don't like the mods I'm using, you can change things up. So I feel like just mods are sort of personal preference, particularly with the sub mods. 
It just depends how you play style and how you sort of want to go about things. Because I have to have a slightly different mob pack to record and stuff. Like, I'm not going for the perspective of playing this particular campaign for like, I don't know, a year straight or six months straight, which some people do. Some people play campaigns for <laughs> seasons on end. So if you want to like slow the battles down a lot, there's some great mods for that. Alright, so let's move on up against the Swaby. Got to keep an eye on them. But here is Justin. Um, this is probably our first time looking at him. Son of Justinian. Wants to fulfill his father's dream and ambition of bringing the Roman, the ancient Roman Empire lands back under our control. Which is going to be easier said than done, because it's taken us nearly seven episodes to bring Iberia under heel. But to be fair, we were dealing with rebellions all around the Empire, and now we've brought in a lot of stability. It just takes a while. Even with, um, just a vanilla Total War Attila and Eastern Roman Empire campaign, more so with the Western Roman Empire, you actually have to forego territory. Um, it's been quite a while since I've played a vanilla Total War camp uh, Attila campaign. I have a bunch of hours in this game, but I reckon I've probably got under 200 with vanilla Attila. Most of it is with all these fantastic mods. I used to tend to, tend to pay <coughs> the, um, DLCs a lot more before they even the 1212 AD and the Vikings mods and stuff came out. Like the Age of Charlemagne DLC I actually really liked. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so I've switched all my horse archers and normal archers to flammable shot. Just trying to break down these towers. But I don't know, for whatever reason, they might have reduced it in this mod, but it doesn't seem to be even that advantageous to try and bring down a... I watched that. Look at this. We are, I'm just using this... As, like, I want to test this out, right? A bit of an experiment. We are using a lot of flammable ammunition. Like, we've nearly used half of the Bukalari shot. I don't know if it's even worth doing that. You might... We might be better off just to hit the units <laughs> for whatever reason. The fire isn't as flammable. Let's say, compared to what I would sort of experience in I don't know, maybe 12 to a day. But anyway, we're still slowly but surely waiting for our additional reinforcements to come in, and then we'll make a charge on in and try and siege the settlement. But they are a little bit weakened. Um, they've actually split their army up. They probably weren't thinking of an attack when they took my allied lands here. Yeah, look at this. So we've only just now hit. <laughs> 100% fire damage. 100% fire. Then it can, um... Start engulfing. There we go. Yeah, now it's gonna fall down. But that was a lot of an investment. I don't know if it was overly worth it. We were probably better off saving all those volleys. To... <clears throat> oh my god, my throat. Excuse me. Um... What was I saying? What was my heart thought? Oh, yeah, we're probably better off using those shots to actually hit the units. And just, like, I guess we sort of take the losses. Anyway, we'll break up some of these infantry that have now come in. And we'll make some army groups to push into the settlement. Because we've got the numerical supremacy. Potentially the equipment on them as well. Definitely the commanders. Justin and his son Tiberius, adoptive son. Um, fighting alongside for the first time. I'm pretty sure, historically, Tiberius rose to the throne after Justin. But we'll just have to see how we go. The thing is, we might have a succession crisis on our hands. Due to Justin having a natural born son. But to be fair, we might have to rely on adoptive heirs and stuff. Okay, so here we go. This is a bit better. We're arcing our shots up and over the wall and putting some really strong pressure 
against the Swaby tribe. They're not doing too well. Okay. Just try and use all your ammunition where you can, guys. Wait for those additional archers to come up. Alright, let's switch back to play. Alright, let's give out some attack orders. It's time to charge on in. Okay. There seems to be multiple ways into the city here, which is good for me. Multiple vectors of attack. So we'll swing you here. Alrighty. Oh, pretty decent peeler charge here. Shields up nice and high. Oh wow, there's even the the symbol on the back end of the shield. How cool does that look? There we go. We're finally fighting with some proper <laughs> decent tier 2 units. Not everything's just trashed here. Alrighty. So, we're starting to put the pressure on the Swaby. With the might of the Roman Empire. There we go. Awesome. Iberia is actually a fantastic province to take as well. Bunch of resources. It's not the best. It's not as good as Greece or even some of the parts in Asia Minor and Egypt and North Africa, but it's definitely up there on the list. It's resource and ports wise, it's definitely far more beneficial than even France and Britannia, I would think. To be honest. Sort of the more you go north, the worse the territory gets. It just hasn't got investment at this time period. Okay, so there's actually two ways to attack around here. Look, we've got cavalry just sitting there not doing anything. And I'm sure our brave Bukalari boys want to go and help out. So, look, you know what? Let's get them to swing around. And we'll try and get some cycle charges down in. Because we might be able to break this grind that's going on. It's not the best idea to send six units at one <laughs> because they are susceptible to getting picked off by arrow fire that sort of wastes them a bit but we should have enough melee attack to push through with these units okay they're now breaking which is good once we get this cavalry in we should be able to wreak some havoc in there. Okay, there's some axemen there. We might actually be able to get around the other side. Oh, here we go. Now we're splurging on in. Okay, move you here. Yeah, start capping, I reckon. <laughs> They're probably going to capitulate before we can get the cavalry in. So the Romans are progressing really well through the city streets in Portugal. And we're going to be able to bring down the Swaby. So they do have some decent swordsmen of, the mo of their own. Those guys looked fantastic. They look really well equipped. Oh, hang on. We've managed to find the general inside. And now we're going down. Perfect. Fantastic. We're about to have our first major victory against the Swaby. The Swaby are a really cool German tribe. The way they distinguish themselves from other German tribes is the knot in their head. It's kind of hard to explain <laughs> without a sort of visual indicator, but look it up. But they are one of the more renowned and uh, more so infamous Germanic tribes. That's kind of cool. I respect it that they've carved out an empire down in Iberia. They picked a good spot. Portugal. Nice, warm and sunny. Very liberal laws <laughs> for narcotics, I guess. <laughs> That's why the Swaby probably love it. They're like, ah, oh, legal mushrooms. <laughs> anyway. Alright, the town square is nearly basically under our control. 
And there's a couple of brave, swaby swordsmen here. Just taking their time. Making us fight for the absolute bitter end of it. And the enemy general's dead. And then they capitulate. The chieftain has fallen. And so do the brave, swaby swordsmen. Alright, sweet. Let's end it straight there. We don't need to run them down. Because we're in a settlement. And a decisive victory for the Roman War Machine. Usually it's a bit touch and go here and there. But with Legion 3, with Justin, who is a five-star commander, he's nearly rivaling <clears throat> his father as a conqueror, I guess. Well, Justin was smarter, uh, Justinian was smart enough to delegate his actions to Belisarius and various commanders. Justin seems to be taking conquest um, <laughs> right by two hands, I guess. So we're pushing now into Portugal, into the Lusitani region. Uh, so we've got some rebels there to deal with, and we might actually be able to completely destroy the Visigoths as well. Okay, we'll start sieging out some Swaby settlement in Galatia. And we might as well push towards Espana as well. So there's only a couple more provinces in uh, settlements in Spain before we have most of the provinces. Other way around. All right, let's put some siege equipment there. Alrighty. So, that recruitment we had in Constantinople looks fantastic. Check this out. We've got a perfect full stack. And I have... Look, you know what? At the height of the Roman Empire... They did have control in Baghdad and can um, sort of control over the territory and definitely influence. So, do I go down there? I think so. We haven't had a war with the Sassanids. I thought we would have been drawn into a war very early on. I think they're just dealing with their own internal political problems. It's been the Western theatre where we've been fighting out. Anyway, we'll get rid of these Hispania rebels. And... After that victory against the Swaby, we sh they shouldn't have too much resistance here. So a decisive victory, taking out <laughs> the Hispania Roman rebels. That have popped up quite a number of times in the last couple of episodes. Okay, we'll replenish and repair where we can. And now with... Well, it's kind of worked out that the Swaby took out my ally that occupied those <laughs> lands. Uh, we're going to be able to catch a Swaby army here in the open field with the Roman fleets. They didn't expect a battle there. We've got our own Nelson. <laughs> Leon, I guess his name is. Alright, now we're just charging on through the Swaby countryside. Another decisive victory. And now that's one settlement left in the north and it's only half a stack as well. There's an amphitheater there, but we'll try and... Uh, we probably don't need that. We probably need to optimize religion, food and sanitation once again. And then we've got our puppetry in uh, Cordova. <laughs> it's so funny that in the last episode they were like, Yeah, um, we're happy to be your puppet. We'll pay you some tax if you leave us alone. In our little oligarchy that we've got down there. Because they knew <laughs> that it was only a matter of time before Hispania was going to fall. Yeah, there's only two provinces now. And then them. <laughs> okay, so... So, we still need to take out the Visigoths. We can't allow them to last. We had a small piece with them, but they knew they were going to get smashed, I reckon. So, let's move on in. Okay, a little bit of resistance there. With Tiberius, what are the odds now? There we go. Now, we're just gobbling up some territory. Alrighty. And... We'll sort of try and break down and replenish and repair where we can. Oh, we can seem to use some of these buildings, which is good, but not all of them, which is a shame. We don't have the money in some areas. We are a little bit lacking on that. We're only making 4k per turn. But that's because we've managed to get a bunch of... Um, well, we have to pay for the tier 2 units that we've got at Constantinople. Um, that's not good. There, so we'll move the navy in. How close... Actually, we'll just get you to block the port. There we, oh, wow. The Navy could probably win that. They pulled them back. So what are the odds now? Yep, we'll take that. And... That's it. She's all over Red Rover. Man, oh man. We've taken Iberia. 
bar our puppetry in the south. It has taken seven episodes to do so. <laughs> Not because we were purely focusing on it, but for the fact that we had to deal with rebellions and discontent and disorder there. But Iberia, Hispania, is fully under Roman control now. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I guess we can focus on France maybe next. Uh, we might go after Mauritania. I wouldn't mind going to war with the, um, the Sassanids as well. There's still a fair few potential options. But we're in a really strong position now. Our empire stretches from the Far East to the west of Iberia. Alright, thank you very much for watching, guys. Stay tuned for episode 8 coming out tomorrow. I don't know who we're going to be fighting or attacking, but I feel there's a war brewing. There's a war on the horizon. We've got a tier 2 army now in the east, so we can bring that over. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're still, we've still got to really take France, Britannia, and even some North African territory as well. Because yeah, we can't really allow... Although I admire the, the Kingdom of Moor and Roman Kingdom in North Africa, um, we kind of need that Mauritania land because the Romans occupied it. So I might need to get a map to see like specifically. Because I think there might even be some border territory over the Danube that the Romans technically had influence in or control. Because like... <laughs> Even though it's like, you know, like the traditional Roman Empire map, even though it's all red, uh, some of it would have been puppetry and stuff. So I might need to get an image to be exact. But honestly, that thing should be seared into my brain, the Roman Empire historical borders. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, take care. Stay tuned for more videos on the channel. Goodbye. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you'd like to stay connected with me. Let me know feedback and suggestions for the video. Got to say a huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tal, Liam B, Kyle P, Tom C, and Wyatt P. But thanks guys, my name has been Simsy, much love from Australia, goodbye.